Hello, this is a short video to introduce you to an internet resource to help you when you encounter a problem in Python that you don't know how to solve. So the resource we're going to introduce you to is stackoverflow.com. So stackoverflow.com um, is a community of developers um, that help each other out with programming problems. Um, so it's probably the most heavily used programming problem site on the internet. Um, if you type any sort of programming problem into Google, for example, probably one of the top, if not the top two or three hits, will be from stackoverflow.com. It's where you, you probably find all of your answers. Um, so it's quite an interesting site. Um, so what I recommend you do is you take a tour of Stack Overflow. Um, so if you go to stackoverflow.com slash tour, it will walk you through um, actually how Stack Overflow works. Um, and I'll give you I'll give you a bit of a taster of that and then we'll have a think about um, a, a simple question and see if Stack Overflow comes up in the top one or two hits on on Google. So what is Stack Overflow? Well, it's a place where you can ask very specific programming questions. Um, it's not a forum, so it's not a place where you will have discussion um, you will find answers to your problems and there may be multiple answers. Um, so here's an example. So somebody is asking a, a question about something called Swift. Don't worry what that is. Um, and then you can see there's two answers to that. And what Stack Overflow is saying is that good answers rise to the top. And they do that because the community of developers um, vote on what they think is a good answer. Um, and eventually a, um, a person who's posed the question will decide this is the best answer and you'll get a green tick there. That will be the accepted answer. So you might ask yourself, um, what is the motivation for, for others to, to help you in this way? Well, the simple thing is with Stack Overflow is this idea of reputation. Um, so you score, eventually, effectively, people score points for doing things on, on Stack Overflow. So for example, if your question is voted up, so if people think it's a good question, um, each time somebody does that, you'll earn five reputation points. If you pose an answer and people think that's a good answer and it's voted up, each time that happens, you'll get 10 points. And if your answer is accepted, you'll get 15 points and these other things. So the more reputation you have, um, the more privileges are unlocked to you on Stack Overflow. So for example, to begin with, you cannot vote. Um, so you need a reputation of at least 15 before you can vote up uh, questions or answers. Um, you need a reputation of at least 50 before you can leave comments. So for example, what you'll see is underneath each answer, um, there'll be people who've left a few comments saying, oh, you might also consider this, or that might be a problem in, in this situation. Um, you can also vote things down if you don't think they're good answers. Um, so uh, you but you need a reputation of 125 to do that. So you start needing to get into serious, being a serious user of this site before you can do it. Um, and what you'll see when you see people answering questions is they usually have very high reputations. Um, and when that happens, that means they've unlocked some pretty interesting privileges. So for example, with two, a reputation of 2000, they can edit other people's posts. So if they don't think the question is very clear, they might um, improve the question. If they don't feel the answer is very good, they might improve the answer. Um, uh, once you're getting up to 3,000, they can vote to close, reopen, or, or migrate questions. And when they're up to 10,000, a very high reputation, they can actually moderate the site. So they can begin to close down questions if they think it's a duplicate of something else or if they think it's not a helpful question. Now, most of the time, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, you will not need to ask a question on Stack Overflow. Um, it's been going for quite some time now. Um, there's a lot of questions on there. And I don't think I've ever had to ask a question on Stack Overflow. So if I encounter a programming problem in, in whatever language, I can usually um, Google that, for example, and the top hit will be from Stack Overflow and that will give me my answer. In the very unlikely uh, scenario where you do need to ask a question, you need to think very carefully about how you ask it before you do. So Stack Overflow has a how to ask section, which I recommend you read. Um, and it talks about um, 
what's a good and bad question, um, how you pose that question, what sort of um, background you should give, what sort of um, example code you should give. Effectively trying to help people reproduce the problem and understand why you're asking it. So let's have a go at using Stack Overflow. So let's suppose I've got two lists of numbers, two separate lists, list A and list B. Um, and what I would like to do is I would like to turn those into a single list. So rather than having list A and list B, I've got list C, which is a concatenation of both of those two lists. So let's see how if we can find anything on the internet to answer that. So, okay, Python list concatenation, top hit was how can I get the concatenation of two lists in Python? And that comes from Stack Overflow. So you can see there's multiple answers from Stack Overflow in the top five. So the question here is, how can I get the concatenation of two lists in Python without modifying either one? Um, so this has got a fairly high uh, voted up this, but actually what you can see is somebody's indicated this question has already been answered on Stack Overflow. So let's go to that original one, how to concatenate two lists in Python, which has 30 answers. So this has been asked in quite a nice way. How do I concatenate two lists in Python? He's given an example. So list one equals one, two, three, and list two equals four, five, six. Um, and the expected outcome of those he wants is one, two, three, four, five, six. What you can see is a few people have left some comments underneath and then we've got some answers. And the best answer has risen to the top and been accepted by the question poser. Um, so he said very simply, you just use the addition operator to combine the two. So if you've got list one and list two, a merged list equals list one plus list two. And there's your output. And then some people have commented on that. There are other answers, some more complicated ones, which aren't, which aren't necessarily the best way to go about it. But this is the one that the Python community seems to favor the most. <laughs>